Could this foam core space age building material change the way we shelter the world? This technology has the capacity to save literally millions of lives. Let's find out on the circuit. Welcome to The Circuit, where we bring you the nation's best young inventors and their inspiring innovations. Here in the Steel City, we'll talk to a mechanical engineer who's created a revolutionary building material that's light as a feather, but strong as Pittsburgh. Meet Mike Atoll. He's a 19-year-old engineering whiz who goes to school in Steeltown, USA. With Pittsburgh famous for creating beams of the harder sort, MICA has developed a material made of plastic and foam which could have big implications the world over. I created portable construction beams for providing rapid deployment shelters for people living in third world countries and refugee camps. They're basically building beams that are very lightweight, strong, yet portable, so anyone can pick up these beams and build themselves a new house. I like to think of myself as always being an inventor. Um, from whenever I was uh, young, I always like uh, taking things apart, putting them back together, figuring out how things worked. So for me, it was always fun just to work with my hands and, and make things, create things. Starting at the age of eight, when he helped his dad rebuild a 1964 Corvair Spider, Micah has become a full-fledged tinkerer and maintains a blog of his exploits. He recently retrofitted his dorm room with space-saving bed stilts. From the minute to the massive, he's an inventor with large-scale ambition. This summer, I was really wanting to get a Vespa, and I asked my dad and if I could go and get myself a Vespa, and he said, yeah, the last thing I need is to worry about you on a motorcycle. So short of getting a Vespa, I decided I could just build myself one. So I took an engine from a weed whacker, and I mounted it on my bicycle and um, I was able to basically build myself a motorcycle um, using some simple parts and uh, motorized my bicycle and got it up to about uh, 30 miles an hour and it, it achieved 200 miles a gallon. So I was pretty proud of that and I felt like I was giving back to the environment at the same time. I've always loved thinking of new ideas. Inventing has always been fun for me. It's kind of like a puzzle, like, you know, what doesn't exist that I could make that would really help people out? And uh, for a while, I was coming up with all these ideas, and I thought these were great, only to find out that they've already been taken. But that's when Micah had an idea for a building material that was ambitious and original. What made you think that you could reinvent the wheel and come up with an entirely new material? Well. In the beginning, it was more of a dream. I didn't even know if it was going to be that feasible, but it was something that was important enough that I wanted to give it my shot. You just start with a uh, flat sheet of plastic, um, however long you want your beam. You slit down the plastic so you can fold it up mm -hmm. into this empty stress skin mold. The stress skin is basically any type of thin material that goes around the outside of a beam. Mm -hmm. It helps to strengthen it, mostly in tension forces. And it works great for these beams because it's also very lightweight yet strong. I take the empty mold, I put it in what I've built here is uh, just a forming box. The mold goes in the forming box and I just close it up here just with a simple uh, wooden peg. Right. And the idea is once it's held inside this forming box, it just keeps it in a nice rectangular shape. I take the liquid foam at this point and I mix it together in a bucket and pour it inside of this mold. In just about two or three minutes, that liquid foam expands, fills the entire empty mold, and then a couple minutes later, the entire beam is cured and ready to go. Um, at that point, from inside, we'll be sitting a brand new beam ready and to go. there you go, look at that magic. Sometimes it's gonna be uh, advantageous to not have just a simple uh, rectangular beam, but different types of beams. Here's a uh, peaked beam I've made where it's got a peak and a trough, as you can see. To get this shape, though, you have to use a different type of forming box. So I've got these uh, wooden inserts here, and that's just going to help make that nice peak and trough shape. And I'm left with a very nice peaked beam. Okay. Looks uh, like that. A little bit like this. <laughs> there you go. Also, you can see I've notched them, um, which is very easy. Um, I just used a, a simple knife, but in the field, you could use a machete or any cutting tool you have. You've cornered the market, basically, with this material. It, it sounds like there's no other material like it that we know of. This is basically a wide open field. I mean, if there were other things out there like this, you'd see them. You wouldn't see, after Hurricane Katrina, people living in tents and trailers. You wouldn't see um, people living in terrible conditions after the Indonesian tsunami. 
I mean, that's what this is meant for. One of my favorite quotes is by Mark Twain. It's a uh, knowledge without experience is just information. So I think it's great to learn stuff in the classroom, but if you can't apply it, then what's it really used for? I really like getting out in the field and actually being able to apply what I've learned and uh, put it to use. While Mike awaits on his patent, he continues his studies at the Swanson School of Engineering here at the University of Pittsburgh. We expect big things from him in the future. In the meantime, we'll see you on the circuit.